Uh, greetings, everybody. This is going to be the intro to the last study for the Temple of Doom. Um, I want you to realize that if there is a temple built in uh, before the end times, which I think there is, it is going to be a temple of doom because they've rejected Jesus, which is the only way to God the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Either Jesus was telling the truth or he's an evil liar. And the you-know-whos in the Middle East think he's a liar. And they want to build their little temple for their God, which is not God the Father in heaven. So it is going to be a temple of doom if you believe Jesus. So keep that in mind. And um, all right, and this is the um, introduction to the last part of Temple of Doom. And I honestly believe that there is going to be a temple built. There are two groups in the Middle East, the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute, and they both want to rebuild a temple. According to some people, they already have a temple going underground. I don't know. Like I say, I haven't been there. I don't know. Uh, you know, to me, it's all rumors. Unless I see it with my own eyes, and even then, uh, with some of the deception stuff they have, even your eyes, you can't really believe anymore. So, all right. This is the introduction. Stay, uh, stay tuned. Here comes the uh, hour plus study. Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I guess this is going to be part E of the temple. I'm not sure if this is going to be the last one or not. But in the previous study, we did the Jesus uh, was crucified. He said, it is finished. And the veil of the temple was rent from the top to heaven to the bottom to the earth. So now we have Jesus for three days and three nights went into the heart of the earth, went to Abraham's bosom, preached to the Old Testament saints, and their soul and spirit is now with the Lord in heaven, awaiting the resurrection of their bones, their bodies, their new heavenly resurrected bodies. But that will not happen until the end of the tribulation. There's only two more resurrections. There's the resurrection, the first resurrection, which happens at the end of the tribulation when Christ returns. And then after the thousand years, there is the second resurrection. You don't want to be in that one. That's, that's not the one you want to be in. So, it says, Blessed and holy is he that is part of the first resurrection. On such, the second death hath no power. I'm probably paraphrasing, but it's pretty close. So, all right. So, Christ, on the third day, was uh, raised out of Abraham's bosom where, you know, he three, the sign of the prophet Jonah, he spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, I believe he spent, oh, what, 40 days uh, with the apostles. And then in the book of Acts, I forget if it's the first chapter or the second, we'll take a look in a second. He told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they were given the Holy Spirit. 
So let's take a look at that. All right, in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, we read, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, Christ was taken up in the clouds, and uh, the two angels said, uh, that's how he's going to return, in the clouds. Very important, people. Paul says that if we're not caught up together with him in the clouds, it's going to be the wrong Messiah. Please keep that in mind. Almost everybody is going to worship the wrong Messiah. Very few church people will even bother to read their Bibles. I mean, you know, they're going to, I almost, I hesitate to say it, but they really, they, they deserve to be deceived. They really do. Do you know that people like John Wycliffe were burned at the stake for the sin of having translated the Bible into their own language so that people could read it. People died to give us the Bible, and they won't even bother to read it. Oh, my pastor is going to tell me what to believe. Well, what happens if your pastor is a, a, a Mason or a Satanist? And I think most of them are. I think well over 90% really are. I just, especially the bigger they are. I mean, it's amazing. And if they never bothered to read the Bible, and they are deceived, something that the Lord considers unforgivable, I mean, what are they going to tell him? Oh, well, you know, eh, you know, Lord, it just wasn't worth my time, you know. I didn't want to be bothered, so, you know, take the mark, worship the beast, the wrong Messiah. What can I tell you? When Christ comes, every eye is going to see him. He's going to come in the clouds, and we're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds. If that doesn't happen, it's the wrong Messiah. That comes before Christ. Read Matthew 24. It tells you plainly, the false Messiah comes first. Tell that to the pre-tribbers. They, they just, they don't believe you. So, all right. Verse 2, Acts 1, verse 2. Until that day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking to the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Ah. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. Now remember, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken those things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. 
And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now these are obviously angels. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. That's right. You're going to see him come back in the same way that you see him go up. So, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So, I think what we ought to do is skip to chapter 2. Uh, let's see. Now, Pentecost means, uh, it has reference to 50. I think it was, I'm not exactly sure. It was either 50 days after Passover or after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I'm not sure. You could look it up, but it was 50 days. I think it was 50 days after Passover. So, Jesus was with uh, three days and three nights in the tomb. Well, his body. And then the uh, third day he rose again. And then he was with them for 40 days. So, I guess in about a, about a week later. Um, well, let's read about it in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Huh, didn't know they had Hondas back then, did you? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now that word wind there is from the word pneuma. It's a Greek word, and uh, perhaps you've heard of pneumatic tools, air tools. Well, uh, wind and spirit, same, same word. So the wind was symbolic of the spirit. I mean, let's face it. Go to uh, when in the when Adam was formed of the earth. Didn't God breathe into his nostrils the breath of life? Same thing. Same well. Same meaning. You know. Let's take a look at that real quick. Genesis two and verse seven. Now, the Hebrew word is different than the Greek, but the meaning is along the same lines. So it's in Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Hmm. All right, so Acts 2.2. 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Remember, Jesus said, well, no, maybe it was John the Baptist. No, it was John the Baptist. Hold on, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, let's read Matthew 3.11. John the Baptist speaking, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Luke 3.16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right, Acts 2 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. 
Ha! Huh. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. See, when the Holy Spirit gave them tongues here, they were speaking in other languages. That's like me learning, knowing German. I mean, I was in Germany for about a year, maybe a little over a year. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But uh, I learned a few words, you know, beer. <laughs> That's an easy one to learn. Uh, actually, beer in German is the same as beer in English. But uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, that would be me being fluent in German, preaching the gospel. That's that kind of thing. Or French. Parlez-vous français? Um, so, verse 6. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these men which speak Galileans? Now, you got to realize something. The true Jews in Jerusalem were scholars of the Bible. You know, the Galileans were like your working class Joes. You know, they were like construction workers, you know, you know rough and tumble. I mean, let's face it, Peter was a fisherman, okay? Um, you know, these guys were not college graduates, PhDs, engineering degrees. No, I don't think so. No. No, they were, you know, blue-collar kind of people. That's kind of why I admire Peter so much, you know. I kind of identify with Peter. And uh, I know the up and downs that he had. I can only, well, imagine. So, hey, these guys are Galileans, you know. They, they don't, you know, they don't have Bible colleges in Galilee, you know. I mean, here in Jerusalem, we got we got the Bible college, you know. And all our instructors said Jesus was no good. All right, so are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? What, In other words, Bob, the Bob translation would be, What in the world is going on here? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Yeah. Yeah, we're speaking in other languages that we never knew before. And what do the unbelievers do? Oh, they're but they're drunk. Don't listen to these guys. But Peter said, verse 16, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Speaking of old men and dreams, I've had some very strange ones lately. Yeah, but this is not about me. 
And all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, if the name of the Lord was given to him by an angel of the Lord, Gabriel, at least one time in the scripture, Gabriel himself was told of the Lord to call him his name Jesus. Maybe we should call him by the name that the angel gave him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe that's why they want to change the name to Yeshua. Because like I keep saying, all the Messianic Jews, I believe, are a Trojan horse. And I honestly think that when the, the man of sin comes, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, by whatever name he's called, that they're going to say, even Yeshua has come. Now remember, the false Christ comes first. Read Matthew 24. Read Mark 13. Don't take my word for it. I could be lying to you. Matter of fact, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Well, that means me too, you know? So, don't trust anybody. And don't ever follow me unless, of course, I'm taking you to Christ. So, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Verse 23. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. But David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. David went to hell. Did you know that? Of course, he was in Abraham's bosom. Yeah, there was a compartment in hell where there, there was no flames, where Lazarus was. And Abraham. I did a Bible study on that. Matter of fact, if you go back to part C of the Temple series, I posted in the comments and in the description the two videos that cover or that I have that cover that um, thing. Where was Christ for three days? Where did he go? He said, as the prophet Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Where was he? Preaching to the spirits in the prison. Think about it. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. 
This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach? No. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the prophecy promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That, my friends, is the gospel. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. That's what we have to do today. Save yourselves from this untoward generation, this evil, wicked generation. Then they were gladly received his word, uh, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That's right. Jesus was doing all those miracles and they thought, the evil ones thought, hey, let's kill him, get rid of this guy before the whole world believes on him. So they kill him. Three days later, he rises from the grave. For 40 days, he's with the apostles, teaching them. I wish I'd, I'd like to know what it was he was teaching them. And then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Ghost, and they get the power of the Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost power, not this fake garbage. I mean, you know what? If Benny Hinn was real, why doesn't he go to every children's hospital and clean it out? If I had the gift of healing, I mean, I think that's what I would like to do. You know, go to the children's hospital, clean it out, put all the doctors out of business. Instead of have the doctors have to sell their Mercedes and get a Ford. You know, think about that. But uh, then again, the uh, AMA would probably kill me to keep their money coming in, bunch of money grubbers. There's a reason why Jesus cast the money changers out of the temple, took a whip of cords and scourged them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Benny Hinn, go to the children's hospital. Clean it out. We, we need some empty space for all these uh, 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 virus uh, patients, you know? At least that's what the news tells us, right? So instead of just having Jesus doing miracles, now you got 11 apostles plus Paul. <laughs> doing all these miracles. So they thought, oh, well, we aren't going to get rid of Jesus. But then it got multiplied by 12. <laughs> I love it. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. This is communism, people. This is the real communism, not that garbage by Karl Mordecai Levy, or whatever his name was, Karl Marx. His real name was Karl Mordecai Levy, or something like that. He was from a long, 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 
line of Talmudic rabbis. What does that tell you? His blood be upon us and upon our children. We have no king but Caesar. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men as every man had need. Hey, Benny Hinn, why don't you sell some of your stuff and uh, give me a share? You know? And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praise the Lord for that, right? All right, let's go to Acts chapter 3 and then we're going to start skipping around. Verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple. Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So here it is, a guy that's lame. He's crippled. He can't work, you know. So he's laying at the temple, hoping that somebody's going to give him some you know, something so that he can survive. I guess, you know, money or maybe food, you know. Um, so, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eye upon Upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, oh, no, I'm sorry. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he immediately took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Ah, so, here it is, the Pharisees, the you-know-whos, killed Jesus to get rid of him because he was doing all these miracles and raising people from the dead and healing the blind and the sick and the lame, you know, raising the dead. And they said, you know, we got to get rid of this guy. Uh, he's doing all these miracles. Well, guess what? They just multiplied it times 11. <laughs> it's like, you know, stamping out a wildfire and the sparks go everywhere. And then all of a sudden, instead of one fire, now you got 11 fires burning. Woo -woo! Verse 8, And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate at the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Wow. And the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? That's right. It wasn't our power. It wasn't by our holiness. No, it's by the Holy Ghost, people. Well, that's the Bob translation. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son, Jesus whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. That's right, Pilate was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith 
in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, who, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed, shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Boy, I tell you what, I the book of Acts, it's, I don't think I've pre, uh, taught enough on the book of Acts. But here we go. All right, so the point being, here it is, they're preaching in the temple. And then the uh, you-know-whos, the rulers, they're like, oh boy, we killed Jesus to get rid of this guy. And now we got 11 others of these. And then along comes Paul. Now we got 12. Well, what are we going to do? We got to get rid of these guys. Well, guess what? They just set off a wildfire. So when they drove them out of Jerusalem, what advice did Jesus give them? Well, in Matthew 10, 23, Jesus said, But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. All right, so, temple. In Acts 7, 48, we read, Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Acts seventeen twenty four, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So, all right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now remember, John the Baptist said that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Keep that in mind. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 and verse 1. Verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1. Okay, yeah. Uh, and remember, Corinth was a city in Greece. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. In other words, I can't talk to you about spiritual things because you're all in the flesh. And you're babies. And, you know, ladies know that when you get a baby... You can't feed it meat. You got to give it milk. And then you got to wean it off the milk before you can feed it solid foods. Verse 2 I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. 
For ye are yet carnal, you're in the flesh. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, this is an important point, people. Um, you might be able to do almost nothing for the Lord and make it into the kingdom, but you're going to be given reward according to your labor. So, remember the parable of the, the, the guy with the pounds? The guy with the 10 pounds, he was given rulership over 10 cities. You know, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Blue Letter Bible, or my favorite is uh, the King James Bible and um, in the search box, type in pounds. And, um, you know, take a look. Parable of the pounds. You know, one guy had one pound, another had five, another had ten. Um, you know, they they labored for the Lord, and they were rewarded. Um, so, you know, the more... Uh, Jesus even said, lay up riches in heaven. You know, if you come across some money and you find a... a you know, the guy that um, it's disabled and you share your good bounty with them, you're laying up treasures in heaven. You know, Jesus taught that, laying up treasures in heaven. There was a Pentecostal church up in Knoxville that had a, a, a sermon on treasures in heaven. Found it in a truck stop. I used to love that. I'd go to truck stops and a lot of them had... Uh, uh, truck stop chapels, and they would have like cassette tapes. Yeah, you're talking back in the 90s. Yeah, I remember eight tracks. That's how old I am. And records. I guess today they got CDs, you know. Uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't mind uh, doing a, a truck stop ministry, but uh, people are so brainwashed, it's terrible. But yeah, he had a thing about uh, treasures in heaven. You know? There you go. Sharing what you got on earth with those that are less fortunate. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing families. Not just drunken drug addicts, bums living on the street. I'm seeing families. You know, the economy is bad. Even before this... Uh, beer called Corona thing, Corona beer, you know, even before that, or should, or is it Car-Rona? But, uh, you know, I, everybody I know is poor. So one of my, somebody uh, left a comment and said I had a condo on the beach. I was said I was one of them. I, I asked him, could you please give me the address? I'd like to go check it out, right? So, Verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. See, there's different rewards. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ah, ye are God's building. What building? The temple. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, 
which is Christ, by the way. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build his foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. People, I did a Bible series on fire. You know, every time I do a Bible study, I learn something. Because I have to research this stuff. You know, I kind of have an outline in my mind, and then I just go for it, you know, as I feel the Lord leads. But uh, the fire series, there, there was a lot there. You know, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, the lake of fire, that's bad. No, not, well, for the unbelievers, yeah, that's going to be bad. But for believers, fire is going to burn up all our earthly stuff, all our fleshy stuff. But those that are in Christ are going to be like the he, three Hebrew children that were thrown into the furnace by Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, they were thrown into the furnace. But who was there with them? The fourth man, like unto the Son of God. Christ was there with them. There was no smoke smell on their clothes. There was not a hair on their head, even singed. And Nebuchadnezzar, when he found he couldn't kill them, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come forth. And they did. They came out of the fiery furnace with not even a hair singed. Well, that's going to be, that was kind of a type of what's going to happen to believers. They're going to be in the fire and all your earthly fleshy stuff's going to be burned up. Your bass boat, your paper money, your all your garbage works. Oh yeah, I you know watch. I binge watch uh, Duck Dynasty or whatever. I don't know. Everybody says he's a Christian. I don't know. I've never really listened to him preach or whatever. So, you know, uh, Housewives of Beverly Hills and uh, Kim Kim the Kardashian and uh, football and um. As the world turns, General Hospital, or is it as the stomach turns? I don't know. That stuff's going to burn up. If any man's work abide, which ye have built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Listen carefully. This is what the series, this temple series is all about. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. You see, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. The temple sacrifice was an abomination after what Christ did on the cross. What the Pharisees were and the Sadducees were doing in the temple after the after the Christ was crucified was an abomination. Jesus said, it is finished. Doing animal sacrifices there after that was a heresy. It was a denial of what God the Father had sent his only begotten son to do. Judaism is a heresy, people. Why do you want to go back to Hebrew roots when it's a heresy? Why? Why would you want to do that? Jesus went to the fig tree, which was a symbol of Judah, and said, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Hebrew roots? There is no Hebrew roots. It's a bare tree of leaves only. The temple is a slap in the face of God the Father and his only begotten Son. And God sent the Jews a message in 70 AD when the Roman army destroyed the temple and burned Jerusalem. 
along with the temple, by the way. I mean, that's a pretty strong message if you ask me. Know ye not that ye, you, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You know, those that drink themselves and, and smoke cigarettes, weed, whatever, um, you know, when you get saved, you, you may not quit the day you get saved, but you know what? There, there's going to be a day when the Holy Spirit's going to convict you and say, no more. No more. You know? Um, I was, I, when I was underage, I used to drink a lot. And then um, I enjoyed the beer and wine in Germany when I was there, but when I came back to America, I couldn't stomach this garbage. So by the time I was 21 years of age and legal, uh, I'd pretty much quit doing it. And then uh, I had to quit, you know, had to pretty much quit uh, smoking too. Had, you know, it's when you drink, it's you want a cigarette. That's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, that's how it is. One day, the Lord will uh, convict you and you'll walk away. If the Lord doesn't convict you of your sin, you ought to examine yourselves whether you're in the faith. Seriously. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. And I'm a fool. I'm a fool for Christ. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. That's right. Evolution? Oh, I got a PhD in evolutionary sciences. Well, you're a fool. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But he that is joined unto the, to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every, man that, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your own body, and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, people, let me tell you something. Very important. This is the whole purpose of this whole Bible study. There is a group of people in the Middle East, the spiritual and physical descendants of the Pharisees. You know, the people that Jesus called hypocrites many times. 
their whole purpose is to rebuild an earthly temple for their God, which is a rejection of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, it's the ultimate rejection of Jesus. You know, there was war in heaven, and this is the ultimate rejection of what Christ did on the cross. There are two groups. One's called the Temple Mount Faithful, and the other is called the Temple Institute. Two different groups, same purpose. They want to build the temple. Some people tell me that they already have a temple underground. I don't know. I haven't been there. I haven't seen anything. I don't know. You know. But, however... 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, we're going to read. But the thing is, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Totally destroyed. There's a group of people called preterists, which believe that, uh, well, there's a lot of different flavors. There's what they call full preterists. There's partial preterists. Um... And then the flip side of that is people that say, uh, well, the preterists believe that everything in the Bible, a full preterist believes that everything in the Bible is past. It happened in 70 AD. Uh, which is kind of hard because I just, with all this evil in the world, I have a hard time believing that this is uh, Christ's kingdom. Of course, they'll say, well, you know, Christ is ruling and reigning in our hearts. Um, I don't know how people can read Revelation chapter 20, 21, and chapter 22 and come to that conclusion, but they have to spiritualize everything away. Now, partial preterists saying that, yeah, a lot of it's been fulfilled, but there's still a little bit to come. I tend to agree with them. Uh, but there's a lot of different flavors to that too. You know, it's like it's like Baskin Robbins. You know, you got 32 different flavors or whatever it is. I don't know. And then you got the flip of the uh, the flip side of the coin, which is uh, the futurists, and they say, well, you know, everything is future. Uh, I yeah, I don't believe that either. You know, part of it was fulfilled in the past, and part of it is future. The Bible, that is. Matthew 24 appears to me that some of that, a, mo a lot of that was fulfilled in the past. But there is still parts of it to be fulfilled in the future. And, you know, I haven't seen the New Jerusalem come down from heaven yet, so it's got to be future. You want to read about New Jerusalem? Revelation 20, chapter 20, Revelation 21, and Revelation 22. We'll, we'll get there. Now, the point being is, in 70 AD, General Titus took, uh, I think it was two Roman legions, and fought against the you-know-whos in Jerusalem and slaughtered them. The Christians escaped uh, because the Roman army pulled back while well, they were waiting for reinforcements. Uh, he had one, uh, Titus had one legion, I think this is how it goes. So he pulled back waiting for reinforcements. He was getting another legion. You know, when you could double your troops, it makes sense to, you know, wait a little while because he had the city surrounded. Well, the Christians in Matthew 24, Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded, uh, encompassed by armies, flee to the mountains. Well, the Christians believed him and did. They fled to the mountains. Well, the Jews didn't believe him, and then the second legion arrived. And if memory serves me correctly, a legion was about 3,000 soldiers. So there was about 6,000 soldiers. They surrounded the city, and they, when they finally got into the city, 
they slaughtered everybody. I mean, it was a bloody mess. All I know is the Christians escaped and the Jews didn't because they didn't believe. But the thing is, the, the temple was totally destroyed in 70 AD. You know, another interesting thing is, um, I forget the year. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Oh, by the way, the temples was destroyed by the Babylonians, and the temple was destroyed by the Romans on the same exact day. Believe it or not, the, what are the odds of that happening? That's 365 times 365. What's the uh, astronomical number of that? You know, that's like um, having two numbers on a lottery ticket out of 365 days, and you won the lotto. Yeah. Both were destroyed on the same day. God sent a message to the Jews. I don't like your temple. But the point is, is that they will claim that the abomination of desolation happened in 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the temple. And we're going to read about that in Thessalonians in a second. But the thing is, General Titus was, you know, you're talking a mere general, a general. And they claim that he claimed that he was God in the temple of God. Well, you know, the thing is, the emperor of Rome would not have taken too kindly to that, okay? Can you imagine a general of the army telling, general, uh, telling Trump, the commander-in-chief of the United States Army, uh, I'm God, you got to worship me? I, you know, I don't, think, uh, I don't think Trump would go for that. Well, the emperor of Rome was even more powerful than, than the President of the United States, as far as political-wise, maybe not militarily-wise, because, you know, we got F-35s and B-2 bombers and, you know. But that's the point. General Titus could not have proclaimed himself to be God with the Roman Emperor on the throne, who, by the way, was his father. <laughs> I don't think his father would have, you know. Uh, son, what are you talking about that you're God? So if, if General Titus didn't do the abomination in 70 AD, that means it has to be future. That's my whole point. All right, a little tidbit here. Um, I, I've already gone over an hour, so maybe I'll do an, another part, but I wanted to, to, to cover this. Uh, I'm going to read an excerpt from an article from a guy called joshuacharles.com it's from his blog 2019 um, 313 and he wrote did God prevent the rebuilding of the Jewish temple and uh, I'd heard about this before but it, just recently just recently because you know uh, well let's read it He and I quote I recently discovered an extremely fascinating historical event I had never heard about. Of course not. The Jews tried to rebuild the temple and were hit with a bunch of things that kept them from happening. Of course they're not going to talk about it because it was supernatural. Apparently there was a, uh, here we go, quote, apparently there was a serious attempt to rebuild the Jewish temple in Jerusalem after it was destroyed in 70 AD. Not only that, but the attempt was thwarted was thwarted by an odd series of seemingly cataclysmic events. Fire burst forth from the foundations, along with a great earthquake, preventing the workers from completing their work. The project was abandoned. Some accounts include insertions that the sign of the cross appeared in the sky as well as on the garments of the workers. The project was apparently initiated by the pagan emperor Julian the Apostate in A.D. 363. He's called the Apostate because he was the first 
emperor post-Constantine to attempt to reestablish paganism in the Roman Empire, while Christianity had not yet been made the state religion, it retained the support of the Roman government. According to the Christian sources, Julian apparently believed that the rebuilding of the temple would be the ultimate proof that Christianity was false, as Christ had predicted its destruction. See Mark 13 and Luke 21 and others. He therefore provided public funds for the project, which was apparently met with enthusiasm by many Jews. Um, so there were um, there's several. Uh, he said it, he uh, unquote. He said he found at least seven different sources which attest to this event. One pagan historian, various church people, uh, all of which were alive, and uh, they speak about it, you know, like it was public knowledge. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, the God was saying, oh, oh, you want to rebuild your temple? I don't think so. I heard about the fire that came out of the uh, foundation, and, um, yeah, an earthquake, you know, yeah. So they kind of gave up on that idea. So, I tell you what, I'm going to do a part, uh, one more part. We're going to read about Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, keep that in mind, what I said about General Titus. Well, you know what? I'm almost done. Let's let's read it. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. So this is obviously talking about the second coming. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, for that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, the second coming can't happen until the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The word perdition means to fall. Uh, you know who the first son of perdition was? Judas Iscariot. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, did you catch that? He's going to oppose and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I'm sorry, I don't believe that General Titus did this. So if it didn't happen with General Titus, either before General Titus or with General Titus, and the temple was destroyed, there has to be another one. And the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute want to make that happen. And that would be the ultimate blasphemy and denial of what Jesus did on the cross. Don't you think? I think that there's going to be another temple. Uh, honestly, I do. And people say, well, if it's made for the Antichrist, how can it be the temple of God? Well, isn't the, wor the whole world the Lord's? You know, God is, I mean, Satan's called the God of this world. But the, uh, the world, um, let's take a look. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.26 For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. There you go. So, I believe that there is going to be another temple. I could be wrong. You know, people say, well, you know, we're the temple of the Lord. And that's true. But wouldn't a temple made with hands, animal sacrifices, um, 
have the man of sin, the Antichrist, the, the son of perdition, the beast, the beast, uh, having the Antichrist sitting on the temple, proclaiming himself that he's God, having Christians put to death, wouldn't that be, that would fit right into Revelation, the Revelation of John. Not John the Baptist, the other John. So, I don't know. That's that's my take. If you got another take, uh, that's fine. You know, because I I don't I don't have it all figured out, people. You know. All right. So, there is a temple in heaven. That we know. All right, so let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time." So, this evil is going to be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, did the Lord come in 70 AD when uh, the preterists say that... Um, General Titus did this? No. This has to happen at the just before Christ returns in glory. Christ is going to destroy with the brightness, with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Think about it. I mean, this is plain as day to me. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. People, this is why these Hebrew roots, Judaizers, antichrists hate Paul. Paul lays it out. You see, these Hebrew roots people and these messianic so-called you-know-whos, I think they're, they're, they're going to, when the man of sin shows up, the Antichrist, the beast, the son of perdition, they're all going to proclaim, oh, Yeshua has come, our Messiah. Mes Yeshua HaMashiach is here. Oh, praise Yeshua HaMashiach. But that's just my opinion. And there might be some messianics. I know I pick on them a lot, but the churches are just as bad. You watch every TV preacher on the t on the tube. Uh, it's got a big name. They're all going to be proclaiming the same thing. You watch. People like me are going to be the odd man out. Trust me. And the Bible, Revelation even says that the false prophet is going to be able to call, do miracles, bringing fire down from the sky to destroy his enemies. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, God, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you. Huh, because God hath from the beginning chosen you. We're God's chosen people, not the Antichrist. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining 
of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by or or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15. Uh, Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathereth them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven. And there came a great voice out of the where? the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. Remember, Christ said, It is done. Well, he said, It is finished. It, it is finished on the earth, and then now in heaven, he says, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. Oh, yeah. So, just remember, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, because this one's going to be burned up. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea verse 2 and I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is, oh, I'm sorry, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Twelve gates, twelve angels, then, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. I don't see a thirteenth Gentile gate to you. 
No, I don't. I don't see a 13th Gentile gate anywhere. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. And the length and breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits. Boy, that's a big wall, people. According to the measure of man, that is, of the angel, um, 144 cubits. Uh, that's, that's at least 75 meters. That's like uh, 75 yards. Yeah. And the building of the wall was of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third chalcedony the fourth an emerald the fifth sardonyx the sixth sardius the seventh chrysolite the eighth beryl the ninth topaz the tenth chrys chrysophrasis i don't know uh, sorry, I didn't take uh, gemology in college. The 11th, a jacinth, the 12th, an amethyst. You know, people, these gems, um, these precious stones, seem to correspond to the stones that the uh, breastplate of the priest was wearing in Leviticus. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls every Several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Here's the punchline. And I saw no temple therein. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Did you catch that? And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Uh, if you're interested, there's going to be another temple in, uh, there's Ezekiel's temple, which I believe, I could be wrong, I believe it's going to be during the millennial reign of Christ, where they're going to be doing animal sacrifices, if memory serves me correctly. But that's not for the believers that are covered with the blood of the Lamb, no. I believe that that temple is going to be for the... Mm, uh, possibly for the people that the the children that died in childbirth, the for those that were aborted, given a chance to grow up in the kingdom, where they're going to be tried and tested. Um, that's kind of my theory. Don't hold me to it. You know, I'm just throwing it out there because. I just don't see any other logical explanation. But you can read about that, Ezekiel's temple on your own. Uh, quite honestly, I don't think it's all that important because the important thing is to get everybody into the kingdom. That's the important thing, not to worship the beast, not to take the mark, not to worship the Antichrist. That's the important thing. Uh, once you get into the kingdom, well, everything else will fall into place. Verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. John 8, 12, right? Jesus, the light of the world. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. 
and there shall in no wise enter in it enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life this is the end of the series all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.